Hello and welcome to this very special webinar. We've had a massive response from progressive accountants and advisors from all over the globe. This is a joint webinar between Practice Paradox and Spotlight Reporting. And I'm absolutely wrapped today to be joined by Richard Francis, the founder and CEO of Spotlight Reporting. Now, if you're new to Practice Paradox, my name's MC, MC Carter. I'm the founder and CEO of Practice Paradox. Today's agenda, we are focusing on how accountants can deliver more future-focused advisory. And both Richard and I are coming from a place where we not only know this is possible, but we have helped hundreds of accounting firms, thousands, achieve the delivery of valuable, meaningful future-focused advisory. So we're not working on theory today, we're working on street smart experience. First, in a moment, we'll be joined by Richard, who'll uh, run through his section. Then I'll chime in with a couple of models that we teach accounting firms on how to scale. Then we'll finish with Q&A. So type your questions in that chat area as we go today, and we'll come to the questions at the end. But first, Richard, over to you. Thanks, MC. Um, absolutely uh, delighted to be here and uh, thrilled to be working with you as my advisory advantage buddy um, and sharing just some of our experiences of working with advisory firms and um, and and helping them to scale what they do. So um, for me, just for those of you who don't know me, um, obviously Richard Francis, CEO of Spotlight Reporting, but my other uh, hat that I wear is a chartered accountant of 25 years plus uh, activity. I'm still active today, actually, on boards and doing you know strategic and virtual CFO work uh, to keep my hand in. But um, cycling back a few years, uh, you know, my experiences really were uh, as as a typical accountant, as many of you on this call will be, looking to do work of value and purpose. And look, in those days, did we call it advisory? Did we call it, call it consultancy? Is it general practitioner accounting work anyway? Uh, I don't really want to dance on the head of a pin today, or or be one of those clickbait merchants who you know who want to to um, create controversy. I think uh, advisory services are really the services that good accountants do to advise their clients to the maximum of their experience and expertise. So very briefly, um, Spotlight Reporting. We are a global software company providing the tools to help empower um, accountants and advisors and those most progressive bookkeepers out there. And uh, we now have uh, boots on the ground, New Zealand, Australia, the UK, the US, uh, and looking at um, a beachhead in Singapore and Canada and South Africa right now. So we're active all around the globe, uh, working with thousands of accounting firms and loving, loving the day job because we get out of bed to empower accountants to do great work. Uh, MC, I think you're queuing up a, a small introductory video on who Spotlight Reporting is. Spotlight Reporting helps accounting firms make the transformational journey from service provider to trusted advisor. Designed for progressive accountants, our suite of award-winning software enables advanced reporting, forecasting, budgeting, consolidation, and more. We also enable businesses, franchises, and not-for-profits to quickly and effectively report group-wide and share benchmarking data. Spotlight Reporting integrates with key accounting and other systems to bring the numbers to life and reveal the key drivers that impact performance. Our software is supported by experienced customer success and education teams to help you to deliver new services and become a trusted advisor to your clients. Um, kind of what's exciting too about some of the work we're doing is we get to play with and talk to lots of amazing uh, other accountants who are in the trenches doing great work. And for those of you who haven't caught MC and myself on uh, advisory advantage, you'll see that uh, we've already got a number of really compelling um, interviews in the can. You can see some of the faces popping up uh, on, on the slide. Steph Hines, uh, Shay Tyre, Matt Sherwood, Chris Hooper, etc. 
um, some really good people sharing some really good stuff. So please go to advisoryadvantage.biz. Uh, we're also on iTunes and SoundCloud uh, and all really to help you do great work. So just moving on to, I suppose, the raison d'etre for Spotlight Reporting and why I moved from um, you know, being an accountant in the field to running a software company was really I spotted a gap and I'd always had the, the desire to empower accountants around me. I wanted the industry to be forward looking so that we could uh, be trusted advisors, earn new fees and really just change lives and do great work because the reputation and the staidness that has permeated our industry for so long was something that really bugged me. I thought, hang on, we're actually doing really great work here. Uh, we have pole position to sit alongside our clients and really change lives and look holistically across their goals, their family, uh, the, the family business, and, and do a lot more than um, just do that annual tax return. So we hope and feel like we're stimulating conversations worldwide. Uh, we know that um, we're moving into our seventh year as the number one reporting and forecasting add-on in the Zero ecosystem. We play agnostically, as you saw from the video, with MYOB, uh, Intuit, Sage and others, because really we want to have an open gate policy for everyone to come in and have the tools that can spark great conversations and advisory. The other thing um, we, we've shared recently was our, our Transform book. So there's a, an advisory playbook, and this is um, taken from my experiences and the experiences of some really good accountants that you uh, will see on Advisory Advantage and elsewhere. Uh, some of our great spotlight reporting advocates. And this is a playbook from uh, running advisory services in a big firm, which is where I started out, and then running my own boutique firm with lots of high value clients and lots of rich, deep interactions. Um, so we've got the book out to, I think we're ticking up to about 10,000 accounting firms now, which is kind of cool. So if you haven't uh, got a copy of the book, we have eBooks available at transform at spotlightreporting.com. Our wonderful team here will ensure that you get uh, access to the advisory playbook. Being a software company, obviously product and evolving journey is always really important. Uh, and who we partner with is also really important. So obviously Practice Paradox, one of our key partners, love the work MC does in helping firms. Um, but working also with My Prosperity, Sage, QuickBooks, MYB and Zero, as I've mentioned, obviously Workflow Max and Google Analytics integrations as well, uh, and good old fashioned Excel for uh, bringing data in across our platform too. So it's really important that we keep evolving our product. Uh, we've got quite an exciting pro product roadmap. Those of you who are up to date with uh, where, we're, where we are at as a company will know that there were some integrations done last year. Obviously, My Prosperity, we've got Wealth Reporting holistic consolidation happening, which is really cool. It broadens the discussion across the family group. We'll pick that up a little bit later because I think that's a really rich theme for advisory and for new fees. Um, lots of design enhancements going on. Account groupings was pretty key. Lots of work happening, of course, in the forecasting product too. Loan amortization, dynamic rules, etc. And you can see all of this on our product roadmap, which uh, MC will bring up nicely for us. Um, unit driver forecasting is a release currently in beta. So we're really excited by that and we really do feel like cash is king and that advisors should be doing a lot more forecasting, a lot more future focused work, uh, which I will come back to and talk about as this was the mainstay of my accounting practice as well. Okay, we'll better keep things moving along. I know you'll have some questions, um, but it is really important that we uh, allow our accountants to customize. So we're just about to see a, uh, a video on that. Easily display your firm's logo along with your clients and control where these appear. Let your style shine through with report covers in Spotlight Reporting. Awesome. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, it's really quite key that um, you know you're not delivering necessarily a spotlight report, but you're delivering your own look, feel, and uh, you know everything's branded 
and uh, you know is, is in your own vernacular. So that's one of the things that we're building into Spotlight Reporting, and we feel is so key and a, a real chance for your creative side to show as well. So just looking at um, advisory services themselves and the desire to start and. Uh, Steph Hines, our good friend who's been a Spotlight Reporting Advocate for many, many years, just makes the, the comment around just start with two. So start with a couple of clients and, and get rolling with the advisory uh, mindset. But I'm, I'm taking this back uh, another step because I'm saying, look, you've really got to make a philosophical commitment to want to do advisory work. And this is where it's, you know, the, the optionality to be a compliance shop and do that work and uh, and you know focus on tax and focus on year end and bits and pieces reactively. Look, that's yours. No one's saying the sky is falling down. Well, I'm certainly not. No one's saying that compliance is dead. Uh, but I think if you are going on the advisory journey, don't just jump on the bandwagon. Make a philosophical commitment to to, to being an advisor uh, and not just a traditional accountant. Make a philosophical commitment uh, and a resourcing commitment. Do the planning. Give your staff the time and um, take the resources that you need for uh, really going to that next level. Because what we find with Spotlight Reporting, and, and we've seen this previously, I, I was the general manager at Xero when, when uh, Xero bought um, Spotlight work papers from us, is you know so much of the drop off or so much of the angst around cloud adoption and advisory has at its heart a, a lack of proper commitment and planning from the accounting for firm or the accountant itself. Um, so really important to make that commitment, make the resourcing commitment, put aside money and time, start thinking beyond core, uh, and, and really, you know, if, if you're not yet ready, wait until you are, and then jump in, boots and all. I talk a lot about being advisory by choice, but then advisory by design. So it's great if you have, uh, you know, decided and committed philosophically and, and the resourcing you need to be an advisory firm, the education you need, it'll be, it'll impact your hiring, it'll impact your marketing, how you sell, <coughs> how you script, what, what you do for free, uh, and what you can uh, offer online and by various other mechanisms. Then the design part becomes really, really important. And this is where you're creating, uh, almost from a blank canvas, the types of services you want to um, provide. Talk to your peers about how to price those. Talk to us. We have a customer success cohort who are uh, experienced accountants who can, or, or from the industry, who can work alongside you and talk about best practice in this space. Um, the kind of uh, approach to creating spotlight reports or creating spotlight forecasts, again, talk to us, talk to peers in the uh, accounting space because when you design your advisory firm right from the bottom up, uh, you'll get much better outcomes than just hoping by inserting that you're now an advisor in a newsletter or uh, offering it on your website that perhaps no one much is visiting anyway, that it will just happen. You need to, need to design your advisory practice from top to toe, but the good news is with the book, the advisory advantage, customer success, and peers in the industry, there's lots of advice step by step uh, for you to do this well. One of the key things I always talk about is you know eating your own dog food, reporting for yourself, being your own virtual CFO as uh, as the first onion ring, so to speak, of advisory services is really really important. This is really where you're in your safety zone, you're in your comfort zone of doing numbers. We're still looking at numbers and budgets and targets. We're looking at accounting for things properly, adopting advisory categorizations so that we can work out the success or otherwise of our advisory push. Um, and I think it's also uh, really, really important that we, we have our own goals, we have our own action plans. We can use Spotlight for that. You know, create the strategy and when, you're, when you have your own robust strategy, your own action plans, budgets and targets, when you're accounting for yourself well, i.e. you're not the builder who lives in a house that's half done, you're the accountant that has great numbers, great spotlights, then when you're reporting, reviewing and revising well and being your own super VCFO, well then you can do that for others. But if you can't do it for yourself, it's going to be a lot harder to, to uh, walk the walk with your clients.
So one of the interesting things uh, that one of our Spotlight users does is actually get one of their um, young team members to create the Spotlight report for their accounting practice. They also role play uh, with Spotlights and um, business cases of live clients on a Friday and work out just what they should be doing. So that's really, really important again is, uh, you know, to be your own uh, virtual CFO and do some of this work, ask the questions, challenge your team, involve the team. Being realistic and smart is really important too. Having realistic expectations of juggling advisory work and forecasting and mentoring and strategy, virtual CFO work with all of the other uh, work you have on. And that does mean you'll have to make some decisions. You'll have to be really realistic. You know, get some quick wins, but make sure you're not wasting time on people who don't pay you and the tie kickers. I've often talked about uh, exiting a certain number of your fees every year so that you can actually free up the time for the work that you want to jump out of bed and do, and you want your team to jump out of bed and do as well. Uh, pricing is really so important. We have a lot of accountants who, who are thinking in six minute units um, and who aren't really, um, who aren't really, uh, you know, looking at uh, getting the price premium, value based, uh, and also just, you know, making sure that uh, they're getting the return on investment and uh, the level of package that is really, really important to generate momentum. So once you've decided what range of advisory services resonate with your clients, and I would recommend that you survey your clients, ask some leading questions, find out what they want. Um, one of my important learnings from being in practice is they don't always know what they want or don't always know what they need. Um, <clears throat> I can feel a Rolling Stones song coming on here. Um, but it, it is really important to ask them to listen, uh, to do what our friends at The Gap call complimentary client reviews, to sit down and, and understand your clients and their needs. Uh, talk to other accountants too about what services are resonating, what they're getting an ROI on as well. Now, MC will tell you uh, it's really important to market and sell the advisory advisory pathways to your clients. If you don't have uh, a marketing and sales uh, mindset, you're going to make it so much harder uh, than otherwise would be the case. It really is, um, you know, the accountants grimace and there's one or two naysayers who are going to go, oh, marketing, who needs to market? We just get this work coming in. And it's kind of true, but if you have no filter, if you're not marketing to the right people for the right reasons to sell the right services that you want to do and that give you ROI, you're just going to get anyone who has a heartbeat and a lot of show up at your practice. I mean, what other business really, um, you know, has, has a business model where all comers uh, are desirable? You know, the, 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 the whole premise of, having a target market personas, understanding who you want to work with at high mutual value that should um, predicate your advisory strategy. So we're going to look now at um, some advisory pathways. So when I do my transform breakfast as I do all around the world and I talk about the, the pathways I had uh, at Francis Consulting and when I was a consultancy manager at a, at a top five firm, uh, what, what were the areas that really allowed us to get maximum value out of our clients, to get the fees up at that nice level where the partners were happy, um, and, and to ensure that customers were satisfied as well. And what was really interesting was understanding that satisfaction often increases with fee levels where the perception of value is high. Okay, so reporting plus, this is where we start with reports or dashboards for your clients. To paraphrase Steph Hines, start with two. Please don't pick the most complex ones that are going to involve you in, in lots of effort and, and arm twisting. Start with two standard clients where you should be giving a board experience, you should be giving a monthly mentoring experience, um, and, and look for the insight that you can generate from the report or the dashboard and why I say that is, of course, you know, we have inbuilt smarts in the software. We can visualize great things. We have drop down menus, auto text, uh, and many other uh, features and functionality. But I keep reminding everyone that software is a means to an end. It's a means to an end of exposing your expertise and experience in the most palatable way to your clients in a manner too that they can understand. It gives you an excuse also to get in front of them 
to set the cadence that you want for your business. Now, I'm a huge fan of cash flow forecasting. I think where I've been criticized for saying we're negligent for not doing cash flow forecasts and budgets for our clients. Um, I find it hard to accept that others in this profession who have business clients don't see that, uh, that we're happy to have our clients bobbing and weaving around the skies without a map or a, or a destination in mind. I'll come back to that slightly later in the webinar because it is a really, really important um, pathway. The other pathway we're going to talk about today is wealth reporting and forecasting. This is the holistic view of the family group. Um, it's looking at the whole picture and, and giving yourself, yourself the right and earning the right to be that kind of trusted advisor and to look at the whole picture and talk about things like goals and uh, personal objectives alongside financial and business. But I do want to return now to cash. Uh, you know, cash is king. We've heard that, that word before, but it's a standard currency we all understand. But more so than that, it's looking ahead rather than backwards. And I know sometimes we get caught up in management reporting and I get told time and again, you know, we just spit out the management reports or we, you know, we, we get lots of insight out of the tax return or what happened last year. But if you're not applying that expertise to the year ahead or the two years or three years or five years ahead, uh, you're not really giving uh, your clients or yourself the horizon view you need to make the right decisions. I talk a lot more about this in our Cash is King Cloud style uh, white paper, which has lots of advice around some of the services I used to deploy um, at, at, at high value, and that was things like debt review, uh, personal wealth, which we'll be talking about as well, pricing reviews, and of course, good old fashioned cash flow forecasting and budgeting. One of the uh, important tools in the armory for a super VCFO of Spotlight Reporting is, is Spotlight Forecasting. So I know there's lots of forecasting tools out there. There's people who have their favorite tribe and their, and their favorite flavor. Uh, there's always a lot to cram into a forecasting tool and uh, always more that's, that's demanded by our, our lovely uh, accounting cohort. So in Spotlight Forecasting, we've, we're just building driver-based forecasting now that's going into beta. What was pretty cool last year, though, was launching dynamic rules, loan amortization, and comparison pages, which um, from the feedback and the, and the number crunching we've done with our customer base has shaved hours off doing uh, both annual forecasting and budgeting, but also rolling forecasts and budgets, which you can do in Spotlight Forecasting. There's a dynamism now that really allows forecasting in the cloud to be done quickly and effectively whilst retaining its premium price point. So that's really, really important. Uh, when I uh, was selling high value advisory, and I'm talking 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar a year clients, having a budget and cash flow offering was a key part to ensuring I could keep the uh, fee base high, but also to ensure that the customers felt that I was being proactive, looking forward and helping them with future decisions and planning for some of the outcomes that they wanted. So please. Do consider if you're not offering this as standard to your business clients now, a budget plus cash flow and potentially multiple scenario offering as well. I believe uh, we've got a video to share on this. Understanding your client's cash flow is crucial to being their trusted advisor. Despite being profitable, a company may go out of business due to bad cash flow. Knowing how much cash is coming and going is important if a business wants to stay liquid, cover bills, invest and grow. With the new cash flow waterfall chart and spotlight, you can see when money is coming and going and how this affects the bank balance. Monitoring cash flow with the waterfall chart will enable you to help your client manage and improve the cash in their business. So what we had there was our cash flow waterfall. So we deliberately um, shared that video because although there's a powerhouse of options in Spotlight Forecasting, actually in Spotlight Reporting, we wanted to introduce, um, a, I suppose, a cheeky little cash flow view uh, just to really get the, the juices flowing, the conversations happening around cash flow as well as 
all of the goodness that's already in spotlight reporting from you know action plans external content the chart galleries the executive summary etc and actually the cash flow waterfall you just saw has been one of the most popular introductions last year into the into the spotlight family so moving on to wealth reporting we're really really excited by our exclusive integration and partnership with my prosperity uh, so my prosperity for those of you who don't know is a personal wealth monitoring tool out of Australia uh, um, and operating also uh, in beta in New Zealand and, and launched live up in the UK and I believe there's plans for world domination via the US. Now for those of you in Australia on this call you'll be probably a little bit more au fait with, with wealth and, and super funds and all of those cool things you have uh, in Australia but it's, it's more of an emerging market for other territories where we haven't had um, similar schemes or, or quite so much exposure in the accounting industry and of course we have to draw a very clear line and distinction that we're not talking about being investment advisors here we're not, we're not talking about breaking through that magical wall where, that can get us into trouble as chartered accountants where we're hawking products or anything like that what we are suggesting though and, and from the imagery you can see is that wealth reporting is really around family advisory with wealth reporting it's about the whole picture it's about I used to call it a holistic consolidation actually which was a bit of a mouthful and I never bothered trademarking that <laughs> for that reason um, but wealth reporting in spotlight reporting allows you to bring in the my prosperity data or data from Excel or you can manually enter the data you want to create a family balance sheet so when I was in practice what I identified was of course we, we were running all these great numbers on MYB or zero or wherever but it was very focused on the business and it didn't uh, really factor in investment portfolios and maybe uh, you know equity and other other um, companies or family assets which often include property etc uh, also we weren't looking at the inflows and outflows from the family perspective and my prosperity allows you to do that and it allows you to bring that into to spotlight and really open the discussion um, up around personal and financial objectives as well so when I was in practice I used to sit down with every business client or every family group and we would set business goals financial goals and personal goals three of each would focus on the current year so what, what are our short-term opportunities and then would do either a three or five year window and actually my old firm where I was a consultancy uh, manager still uses a very similar tool to which I set up and I'm delighted that they're actually nationwide a spotlight reporting user so I'm not gonna get grumpy about IP but really a very simple concept around you know opening up the discussion into areas that occasionally accountants have found uncomfortable but I found that when you're talking personal goals and you're talking wealth you really are seeing the whole picture and can advise with confidence you can advise with certainty uh, there are services you can provide that are really um, often more valuable than traditional core counting services so uh, we're excited by the integration we're getting lots of firms coming on uh, this opens up Mar and Par wealth consolidation work for uh, accountants and also for high net worth and family offices as well um, but what a wonderful opportunity to to deepen those relationships I've always had the view that business is personal and therefore the, the more we can do to be human uh, advisory is a very human aspect of our um, of our role and, and what I would love to see more in the industry is us taking the time and effort to to understand uh, the language of our customers to not only roll together the business financial and personal goals that they want um, but to be better listeners to ask the right questions to construct the plans where they see value and my challenge and one of the things I used to say as a mentor to my team was we were really only as good as our last session our, our last planning session or spotlight session we're only as good as the advice we're currently providing and if you're if you're charging 30 40 50 thousand dollars per annum for clients you know st fairly standard business and family clients you do have to deliver the value you have to really deploy your expertise and experience but you also have to uh, can continue to challenge yourself in your own training uh, you need to be continually developing and and not just going to uh, you know the chartered accountants 
courses and you know you have to be looking beyond that to industry and entrepreneurial stuff as well so um, you know unlocking and providing that complete view for your clients also opens and unlocks new horizons for yourself and I just found the work far more engaging than uh, you know ha having sleepless nights around ATO or IRD deadlines I found that by having a plan by having designed the practice I wanted that I had you know a really exciting uh, career in accounting and it actually led to um, spotlight reporting I saw the gap I saw zero come along and they were doing beautiful reporting and, and it really revived you know um, the whole industry and, and we saw a number of, of, of great software companies spin out by accountants believe it or not um, who really wanted to impact and empower the industry so you know I've loved being a, a trusted advisor for for lots of clients I've loved helping via spotlight and, and things like the work we did at zero um, other accounting firms have some really good experiences and just to challenge whether they can do more for their clients and be more in their own careers so if you're looking to get started with spotlight if you're not uh, one of our crew right now um, there's a number of services we offer that we we feel are pretty key customer success specialism uh, that's that's one of the things we really wanted to embed with our software it's it's about humans as well so every territory has a customer success specialist uh, ably managed by Danelle here at HQ who who came to us from a zero spotlight uh, accounting firm and has lots of industry experience speaking of which uh, Matt Kikena who heads up our education training and support team globally uh, came to us over the fence from an accounting firm using zero and dabbling with spotlight we can now certify uh, you and spotlight reporting put it on your LinkedIn um, badge to wear with honor because it shows that you're on the advisory journey and uh, we have a 24 7 global education training and support team again we know it's very important for you to have humans on the other end uh, transform in action is a training series where we bring together uh, some of the key lessons from the book from myself from um, some of our best advisors and spotlighters out there uh, in the trenches and it really is I mean we're getting great reviews from this this is a workshop you know a live workshop 12 part training series to really help you implement advisory services so this is available to our subscribers so subscribe first unlock the power of transform in action so that's uh, a a brief overview of really how to start deploying advisory services um, for your clients even if you're not a spotlight reporting user or you don't intend to use any software I think just think of the power of the team the power of your leadership around what you can do in the advisory space how you can design the uh, practice that you want and the services around personal wealth forecasting budgeting uh, mentoring and uh, virtual CFO that you can deploy so that your customers are more satisfied they're paying your more money you more money but hopefully you're helping uh, empower them to get to their goals and really enjoy being part of your network and um, benefiting from your experience and expertise so I'm going to pass back to MC now I know he wants to finish with some uh, additional words hi everyone I've exited and come back in and hopefully that will fix it we have been enduring a few issues this morning with this platform not dealing well with two presenters maybe because we're in different countries who knows so I'll just share my screen and let's see if we get this working okay I'll await confirmation from my team in slack that you're hearing me okay Woohoo! okay stay with me guys this will be worth your time if you don't have an appointment butting up to the end of this stay with me MC Carter founder of practice paradox we are a digital marketing agency focused solely on helping progressive accounting and advisory firms frankly to be more and to do more with your clients our goal is to help you break out of your box now whatever that box is is your def definition not ours often people describe it as the compliance box where despite the fact you're capable of delivering more advisory services and you have brilliant tools like the suite of spotlight reporting apps to do it 
you might find that you're not doing it to as many clients as you like. So that is our role and our mission to help you break out of that box. I should comment too, that is not at all to bag compliance. Compliance is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's an awesome uh, base for a consulting firm, isn't it? For an advisory firm. Like Spotlight Reporting, Paradox is a global organization in terms of the firms that we help in multiple countries around the world. And also our team is geographically distributed, which is kind of common these days. Not so common when we started. We started almost 10 years ago and we were the first digital marketing agency on the planet to specialize inch wide, mile deep in helping accounting and advisory. And here's why, you know this, accountants are at the very core of small business because you are belly to belly, so to speak, with small, medium sized business owners every day, every week. But it is tragic that the benchmarking reports show that most accountants, maybe not you, by virtue of the fact you're here as a progressive accountant for starters, but most accounting firms are in more of the reactive mode. But those that do provide the future focused advice, they not only improve their clients' businesses, but they change the, the lives of the families within and around those businesses. And that is our core belief and what drives us. You can see that uh, Richard and Spotlight and Paradox together, myself, we sing from a similar song sheet. It is about transforming accounting firms and the account, accounting profession globally from being transactional focus to being transformational, to really step up from being just a trusted advisor to actually being a true advisor where you're consistently delivering it. So this only happens when you um, educate, inspire and lead your business owners to implement strategy, systems and change. And I'll go give you some tools how you can do that for yourself and your business clients today. And now the two most important skills in making that shift is marketing and innovation. Peter Drucker, the grandfather of management education, first person to talk about business as a science, a thing that you can think about and work out methodology said, because the purpose of a business is to create a customer, the enterprise has only two functions, marketing, and innovation. These produce results. Everything else is a cost. Now that's Peter Drucker uh, saying that, not me, but I do love to quote it because it plays with the, the minds of accountants. But if you think about it, marketing is attracting to you the clients that you want. Innovation is being smart, clever uh, in delivering that value. And everything else really is a support to that. Now I'm not about to get into a caftan and tell everyone to, you know, join arms, link arms and sing Kumbaya here. But this is the ripple effect. We call it the ripple of love internally, that it's our goal to help you affect, to bring about in society, is through you help small business, help the families within them. And when the small business sector is prospering, society is in a good place. So why advisory in the first place? You will, when you nail how to market, sell and deliver advisory, you will attract better quality clients who actually want advisory services such business advisory and the family wealth advisory that Richard ran through earlier. And that's a great thing. Everyone wants better quality clients. You can and will grow your revenue and your average client fee. And you can be in a position where you can generate equal or greater revenue with fewer clients. Because let's face it, every new client is a relationship. Whether they're a $2,000 a year client or a $10,000 a year client, client, it's still a relationship to manage. Now, when you do your marketing well, you reduce price sensitivity, you increase your margins because you position your brand as that trusted authority. You'll make a bigger difference in your client's lives, as I've already touched on. And at the end of the day, you give your team and yourself much more rewarding work to do because you can see the impact it's making. And for you as an equity holder in your business, you build a more significant, more valuable business. And I'll share a case study with you today of one of our members that we've helped for a number of years, very recently within the last four or so weeks announced a very successful transaction on that front. First, I want to deal with this little chestnut, growth versus evolution. Sometimes we hear people say, but I don't want to grow because the implications of growth might be, well, that's more complexity. Do I want a lot more clients? Do I want a lot more staff? And the answer might be no, and that's okay. But what we focus on is growth can mean and does mean inherently evolution. So you can have a life of, with 
actually less complexity, but you can evolve your business to have those better quality advisory clients. And I think everyone wants to evolve. I think you'd agree. Whereas growth is optional. My first word of warning to you when it comes to marketing, you are preyed upon, your inbox is peppered every day with vendors to the profession selling you what I call silver bullets. And in the marketing space, that's someone saying, hey, get a website from us, that'll fix your marketing. Hey, get this social media app and this cookie cutter content, that'll fix your marketing. Or dear sir slash madam, you know these emails, um, I've looked at your website and you could be ranking better in Google. So you know our SEO, search engine optimization, will fix your marketing. Here's the truth. No one thing will fix your marketing. No one thing. They're all silver bullets. And silver bullets cost you money, but what you end up with is frustration and a fragmented approach to growing and evolving your business. So beware of silver bullets. And I'm about to give you a very systematic approach to avoiding them. Now in life, there are certain sequences that we need to follow. You know, the proverbial cart before the horse. And one of those things is gears. Let's say learning to drive a car, if you do in fact have a manual license, not just a, um, an automatic as my wife does. But when you go to start a car, you, when you're learning, you might accidentally go to start that car in third gear. What happens? You don't really get very far. Same with your marketing. There are three gears. Now your first gear where you must start is strategy. Your second gear we call presence, your digital presence. I'll explain each of these in a moment. And your third gear is cadence, and I'll explain that as well. Now, you must do your marketing in this order or you'll waste time, money, energy, and end up frustrated. Now, we actually have evolved our business over the years to the point where we always start with strategy, with client. You could come to us and say, I want you to do our SEO or a new website or our blogging or our social media. And whilst we can do that, it would be ethically and morally wrong for us to go, okay, and just start on that. You must start with strategy. Now we've developed a framework where there are seven what I call big rocks of strategy. That when you get these right, one after the other, because each builds on the other, you get a sense of clarity that then makes the other gears uh, easy and you get momentum. So briefly I'll share with you here, the seven target audience. Who do you want to attract as your ideal client? That doesn't mean or have to mean industry niching or niching at all, but you need to be very specific. We help our firms develop, our member firms develop target buyer personas, which is very specific definition of one or more ideal client types. And this is not client selection criteria where you know our ideal client has revenue of X million, uh, pays their bills on time, is a good listener. You line up everyone, who doesn't want that? That is of no use in your marketing. Those criteria are useful screening inquiries, but not in your marketing. After your target audience, then we help you work out your desired positioning. This means what position in their mind, which pigeonhole, virtual pigeonhole in their mind do you want to occupy? Because you cannot be all things to all people. If you try, it's a recipe for mediocrity. And we give you a tool called Perceptual Maps, so it can help you work out, do you want to be perceived as innovative and, and new and fresh or traditional and safe and secure, because you can't be both. Do you want to be perceived as a specialist or a generalist, because you can't be perceived as both. Do you want to be perceived as you know affordable and you know uh, budget end of the spectrum, or premium, because you can't be both. That's desired positioning, is picking the pigeonholes in your target market's minds, because if you don't, guess who? They will, and that doesn't turn out well for you. Next, we look at your business model. One of my favorite mantras is, if you can't scale it, don't sell it. So we help you look at some assumptions which might have been just um, inherited from the previous firms that you've worked in or been a part of, and we look at your revenue model, sales model, delivery model, and make sure before you grow that it'll be easy to grow. We look at your client value mix in terms of target revenue at a certain point in time. What's your average client fee? What's the smallest end? What's the biggest end? And help you map out the mix of client sizes and values. Then we give you a tool that enables you, speaking of scalability, but this is on a more granular level, on a service by service basis, help you analyze the scalability, the six different criteria of each and every service. Because I know that you're capable of doing a lot more than if you look into your reporting that you're probably typically providing to you know, your bread and butter. We've helped so many firms do more advisory and this is how. So we'll help you work out, out of those dozens, 
of nameable, priceable services. Where's the sweet spot? Where's the half a dozen or so services that you can really uh, be outstanding at and that will be scalable? And I know scalable is a word that gets thrown, thrown around a lot, particularly you know, in recent years. But here's what it means for you. It means building a business where as you grow and get busier, you won't be the bottleneck that is already last time I looked at the top of the bottle. What's the point of growing advisory if it's going to exacerbate a bottleneck that already exists? It's just a recipe for stress. And any growth or success will be short lived because you'll burn out. So we'll help you work out your scalable services. Then, have you ever tried to do pricing and packaging? You know, these, um, you know, using awesome tools like practice ignition, you can't use a tool like that until you're very clear on your pricing methodologies, formulas, and what your packages are. But to start at that point is difficult. Starting at this point here, after doing those previous five, it's a clear path that we guide you on. And lastly, funnel design is what series of little baby steps. We call it increasing gradient. What series of steps do you want a prospective client to go from being at a point where they've never heard of you before to going through awareness of you, interest, desire, and commitment? And that's the start. Now that is our strategy fast track. I'm gonna share with you a couple of examples here. This is a firm, uh, white and black, you can see there web address there, whiteblack.com.au. Jason McDonald, I've interviewed him in our own webinars and uh, in Facebook live streams. When Jason came to us, he thought he had a strategy. When he went through that framework that I just shared with you, which we deliver over a four week period, he realized that the strategy that he had was unlikely to succeed. And it explained why it was a challenge for him to grow to the business to that point, because the advisory services that he had decided to focus on weren't very scalable. He worked out it would take years, five, six, seven years for someone, for him to hire someone and train them up to his level in that area. So what he worked out following our frameworks is how to be more scalable. Then we helped him get really clear on those seven big rocks, target audience, desired positioning. And the result right now, now picture this for you. Last time we spoke Jason, he's getting one to, new, one to two new clients every week. That'd be nice at a value of ten dollars to $20,000. That's because we've shown him how to bake in advisory. So it's not some sort of optional upsell that you hope to cross sell in a future needs review or client review, because I'll tell you now, that approach doesn't work. And it doesn't work because the pigeonhole in your client's mind has already been set. What works far better is attracting people who want advisory in the first place, packaging it, pricing it well, so it's easy to explain, and they get it from the get-go, from day one. So nice place to be in, one to two new clients for Jason McDonald every week, 10 to 20,000 in value. Now that 10 to 20,000 Jason shared with us was um, not just like a big year one amount with projects, that's his recurring. He's doing virtual CFO, he's a big fan uh, of Spotlight Tools as well. Another example, have you ever been frustrated where you think, well, oh God, we've invested so much in tools and apps and training and courses on how to do advisory, but still not doing a lot. Matt Sharwood here, his sole practitioner, well, he was when he came to us a few years ago. Uh, he's now two partner. One of his team members came through, has come through as a partner now. His average client fee per year when he started with us was 1800 a year. That was his bog standard small business type of compliance, quarterly, annual tax and compliance. Important work, sure, but he wanted to do more than that. I'll cut to the chase and tell you the results that he's now achieving. Last year, he chose not to grow. Well, that's cool. He focused on evolution last year, last calendar year, focused on efficiency and process because the year before, he added $100,000 per month in monthly recurring revenue, or the trendy MRR term these days, borrowed from software companies. So 100000 additional MRR per month, so 1.2 million per year in advisory alone. And on our YouTube channel, you can see me interview Matt about that. Top guy, Matt, very down to earth. And he's passionate, as I'm sure you are, by virtue of the fact you're here, in helping clients grow. So he went through our whole strategic framework that I showed you there. And notice this is just scrolling down further on his website. He's not named, talking in three letter acronyms like GST, you know, BAS or VAT, or depending what country you're in, he's talking about the outcomes that his clients want to achieve. The favorite phrase I've ever heard Matt's utter is MC, we're growing and we're not even trying. And he said it almost with a, uh, an air of guilt. And I said, let's unpack that though. 
It's what you put in place with your strategy, your presence. So, for example, we came up with his name. He's what we call a breakout Benny. He was in a previous firm. He broke out and wanted to really go innovative. So we've done all of his digital presence. And all of those leads are inbound leads, meaning they come to you. Now, here's a key takeaway. You must keep your hands on the strategic wheel in your business. You cannot abdicate strategy. That'd be like sitting back and letting someone else steer your vehicle. So you must learn the basic tenets of strategy, which is why we start there. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have others with your marketing, with their oars in the water to keep the nautical metaphor going. You don't have to do it all. You have to guide it, you have to steer it. And strategy is profound, it's crucial, but ultimately it's simple. And it's a series of decisions that we help you make. So that's the strategy gear. Now with the technical, glitches that we had, we are going to go 10 minutes over the scheduled end time. Apologies for that, but I think you'll be glad that you stayed until the end here. So within the three years, you get that first gear going and you are moving to a very good place so that some of the marketing you then want to do will actually work. So this is your digital presence. I won't run through these in detail. I'll just say them quickly. Your brand, your value proposition, your website content, now that's the horse that goes before the cart. Website design, social media setup, your content plan, what content will you publish over the coming year, and your funnel build. So that's using some really cool little apps that we connect to your website through to your marketing database. Now note some things there, website design. That is the fourth element in the second gear. So many firms go to a website provider who's not at all strategic, who even gives to you like a questionnaire or Microsoft Word document for you guys to fill out the words. Holy cow, are you a professional copywriter? Probably not. Just like businesses need to outsource their financial control and forecasting to you because you do that day in, day out. Same with your website content, which is why that horse is before that cart of website design. But when you have a great digital presence, think about some firms that when you think, wow, they just shine like a beacon in the marketplace, they just stand out. Think of one of two of those firms now. The reason they do that doesn't happen by accident. They have put these things in place to have an amazing brand, a great value proposition, and all of these pieces together. And that's why they go pow. You think that is a very impressive business. Example here, uh, Embrace Accountants, when they came to us, they were called Antoinette Palmer and Associates, very traditional name. They actually came up with the name Embrace and we gave it the thumbs up. There's a lot of meaning behind that word for them. Now they've been able to evolve, back to that word again. When they came to us, um, Antoinette, lovely person, she was working very, very hard, as I'm sure you are, but she was at a point where she was working seven days a week and had too many low value clients. She shared with me, look, my staff are getting paid more than me. So I don't know if you've ever been in that place of too many low value clients, but it's not a happy place for anyone, probably including your clients. So we've been able to help Antoinette get really clear on her strategy with our strategy fast track program, really smash her digital presence, the second gear out of the park. She's really clear on some different target markets you can see on screen. So now she's attracting better quality clients of higher value. So she now has fewer clients of more value, her revenue is up, her profit is way up, and she's having a better life. Now, has she got the perfect business already? No, she's still evolving and we're still guiding her. Most recently we've been training her around handling incoming leads, how to do the scoping and proposal process. What dare I say it, sales. Sorry, rude word. Now, uh, this is another screen on Antoinette's site there about you know reasons to choose Embrace. Again, it's not in jargon, it's speaking direct, uh, using the language of who they're wanting to connect with. And in terms of the services that they provide, sure, tax and compliance, brilliant. But on the right, business advisory. And it is crucial to sell that in the overall messaging from the get-go. Someone comes to you for a cheap tax return, you know, just help me lodge my quarterly bass or um, whichever country you're in, with, in terms of quarterly annual lodgements. They're unlikely, unlikely to be a good advisory client down the track. Are you with me here? So this on screen now is an example of some recent blog posts from their site that we also do their blogging. And when you blog, it can't be about tax and compliance and dry technical things. I've got news, clients don't wanna read that stuff. They just really do not wanna read that stuff. So that's digital presence. 
And then lastly, the third gear of marketing um, before we go into Q&A is cadence. Bit of an unusual word, but if you're a cyclist, you'll know what cadence means. So cadence is about that routine and that pattern of what needs to happen at a very steady, continued pace, like pedaling on a bicycle. So this is your monthly publishing cycle. It's your blogging, it's your email newsletters, it's your social media posts, it's your SEO, your, your search engine optimization, which when we do it for you is strategic to help you rank well for phrases that your ideal client types are searching on. So publish, attract. So do you know, for example, what is your website traffic right now? And where are they coming from? Are they coming through search, through social, through uh, direct means? When you work with us, we get you savvy to all of this. None of it's hard once you know how. But you want to attract, your website needs to get the, its uh, number of visitors per month above 1,000, ultimately above 2,000, for your, that bright, shiny new website to actually be of any business use to you. Then is your website converting visitors onto your email list? Do you have automation in place to follow them up and give them more useful information? Do you have an ongoing process of nurturing them with educational articles? Because that's the key. It's not about sell, sell, sell. No one likes to be sold to, but everyone loves to buy. It's never been a truer statement. No one likes to be sold to, but everyone likes to buy. So this is a process of educating, inspiring, and leading good quality clients to your door. Again, inbound marketing. You can just get rid of outbound marketing, which is going to networking breakfasts and saying your little 30, 60 second pitch or you know, doing cold calling and prospecting. That's last century. You can leave all of that behind with this process. Then after nurture, invite is a professional sales process that we teach both for new leads, you know, potential clients and your existing clients, how to uh, evolve them over time. And then we think you should look at onboarding as part of your sales process. So here's another quick example before Q&A. Consolidate. Now you may have heard of Consolidate, if you haven't, they're a Brisbane-based firm and recently was announced in the press, so I can tell everyone, they were acquired by BDO in Australia, so second tier firm. Very successful exit. I'll be interviewing the founder, Tanya Tipman, and her business development manager, Rebecca, they're the two in the middle of that photo there, on how it happened and how they've been able to get a valuation, not based on the good old dollar for dollar, but on the intellectual property that they've built around their brand, their marketing and innovation. Now, when they came to us, they were active with their marketing, but they'd started in second and third gears. They had a number of uh, the big rocks in strategy missing, but they didn't know that it was missing. And I'd like to re recount the story, um, makes me smile. Tanya called me on a Monday morning. The previous Friday night was the annual ZeroCon awards dinner, back when a big deal was made out of it. And it wasn't just handed out over afternoon tea. But uh, they just won Zero Partner of the Year in Australia. Oh, sorry, someone else won it and she was peeved that it wasn't them, they were in the running. And she joined the dots and she worked out that at that time, out of the last six Zero Partners of the Year, Four of them were firms where we drive their marketing. And she joined those dots, called us and said, look MC, how can you help us? We're already doing lots of marketing. You know, have a look at our site, have a look at our brand. And all of the things that she referred to were in the presence, the second gear, or in the cadence, their blogging and content. They didn't have their strategy down solidly and we helped them transform. And they've got a really strong presence across all of their different uh, digital assets, which is just a trendy way of saying their different social media. So when you do those three gears in order, strategy, presence, cadence, you really do end up with a business that has good quality advisory clients who come to you, get rid of outbound, generate inbound leads. So your next step from here, take note of this, Go to practiceparadox.com.au forward slash initial chat. And there you can book time to have a chat with one of our digital marketing advisors. Just a simple brief chat, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending how chatty you are. And we'll explain to you our next intake of our strategy fast track program, how it's guaranteed. We're fine to give the money back guarantee on this. I've actually been told by a mentor of mine that we should charge $20,000 for the strategy fast track because what it achieves for firms is easily worth that if we were to do, to do full value pricing. But we don't price it anywhere near that. It's less than a tenth of that because for us, 
it's just the first gear to help you get going. So we have an another intake of our strategy fast track uh, coming up. So book a time to have a chat with us and we'll let you know uh, the details of that program, how it works and the clarity that you will get out of it. Now with our glitches that we had earlier, sincere apologies about that everyone. We've got five minutes, Richard, for a Q&A to run through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a look in the chat to see if there's any questions. And let me just see, Rich, can you unmute yourself? I can, I'm here. And how do you feel about even showing your webcam now? What do you reckon? Oh, golly, okay. Let me just... Uh... You can if you like. <laughs> um, first button on the left at the top. There we go. There you are. Well, so I'll apologies to everyone for going over time. I'm kind of perched here with the, t with the desk mid midway between sitting down and standing up. Now, I'm keeping an eye on the questions. I'll read them out. Are your programs applicable sure. to non-Australian CPAs? 100%. Uh, uh, I showed a slide earlier with little green circles all over it. We've got clients in multiple countries. In fact, what we do has even been translated into Dutch. So we've got Paradox Netherlands. So we're global. We can help firms anywhere because business advisory is not jurisdictional, really. It's management account. Timeless. So uh, another question, Rich, is recorded webinar. Yes, we'll send you a link. And let's see. What would you say, Richard, is the biggest um, stumbling block that if a firm is at a point where most of their revenue is traditional service mix at the moment, they've got yep. spotlight reporting, they're great at using the tools, they've made the mindset, what, do, what have you seen in your experience in your own firm with the firms you've helped is often the missing link or two in your experience? It, it's, if, so if they've already made the commitment, it's the resourcing. Um, I have stood in rooms all around the world doing workshops to accounting firms from big four um, down and asked people to put, uh, you know, the staff members are often there, the partner could be the one that's invited me in and I say, well, how many people have the time to do advisory? How many people are given the time in this room to use Spotlight and other tools? And there's always about one or two hands out of kind of 40 or 50 go up and they all look at the partner or the director who, who then moves sheepishly around at the front of the uh, front of the room because you know <laughs> why why buy the software but you're still doing the grind for all of the for the clients who don't you know want to um, pay you or you know who are who are stuck in compliance lane so they're not they're not giving up the dross work for the better work or they're not resourcing enough so that their staff can be educated empowered and let loose on advisory so that's number one by by some way. Yeah, it's chicken in the egg, isn't it? Um, but clearly yeah. they need to have the capacity to deliver it or yeah. why bring it in in the first place? At least well, these days. Accountants are bigger busy already, aren't they? As you know, MC, you know, time time is tough. We're all working longer hours. So I think a lot of people are actually turned off by the thought of advisory because it's, it, hey, it's more work. Um, but if you substitute yeah. out the work you don't enjoy or it doesn't make margin for that, problem solved. And sadly, in my view, um, over the last... 20 plus years, showing my age, a lot of the coaches and consultants of the profession have told accountants to, you know, compliance is dead, become a business development advisor, be a business yeah. coach. And the models they've been suggesting have not been that scalable beyond the most senior people in the yeah. firm. And that's not a good place to be. Whereas management accounting, you know, you can get your, uh, you mentioned a firm earlier that gets more junior staff involved in the preparation of reports. You can get yeah, intermediate absolutely. staff involved in interpreting and doing commentary on the reports. So this suite's what I think is the CFO virtual advisory. You can definitely make that scalable outside of the partners and principals. Well, we're, t we're talking about smart, you know, millennials and Gen Ys and all of those who are in our practices now. You know, they're, they're not dumb, but they're being stuck in their little hen, hen house um, swim lanes doing what they're doing. And we've got some of them working for us now because they've literally gone over the fence or, or, or gone down the escape tunnel to come into software land because they got so sick of a career that was, you know, had one arm tied behind their backs. So I think accounting partners do need to wake up and empower the the ones who don't have gray hair to be doing this work and, and to be learning from us as well in the trenches. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
it is just so doable. It's no longer some sort of holy grail that, oh, yeah, only the outlier firms really succeed in crossing the chasm, as I call it, and doing advisory. It's, it's right there. It's just so doable now. Absolutely. And some of our best firms are, um, you know, and I say this with love and respect, they are cardigan wearers. You know, they're the ones who have been in practice for a long time. They're general practitioner accountants, and they just want to add some onion layers of um, services around what they have done and their expertise. So it's not always the rock star noisy ones. Um, there's a lot of great advisory work happening across the industry. Yeah, people don't have to be kind of, you know, out there rock star extroverts, do they, to successfully deliver advisory. Um, it is really, I, I think it's becoming just the standard offering that a modern accounting firm provides. Now, I'm just going to share the, uh, a little piece of information for how people can get more info from each of us, Richard, just once again, because some people sure. came in a little late. I'll just share with everyone my desktop here. And so you've told people earlier that they can get a 28-day trial by going to spotlightreporting.com. Absolutely. They can get uh, our, our Transform book by uh, emailing transform at spotlightreporting.com. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, intel in there that will be really helpful, a lot of war wounds that we share. So, um, yeah, feel free to reach out. Yeah, it's a great read, and unlike most books, you haven't padded it out to 300 words just because a publisher said uh, 300 pages just because a publisher said to. It's, no, I've, got, uh, I've been asked for version two now, though, so I've got to I've got to I've got to share a few more war wounds and a few stories. But there's, <laughs> and there's so there's so many great case studies out there, um, as you've shared today, and so you've you've got some great firms that you've been working with. And uh, so there's a few ways that people can get more information, more learning from Spotlight Reporting, and for us practiceparadox.com.au slash initial chat. So thanks everyone who is still with us, which is the vast majority of people. Certainly appreciate your patience through, I think it's the last time we're gonna use this webinar platform, but thank you for your patience through those video issues that we had before everyone. Uh, I appreciate it. And thanks Rich for collaborating on today's Pleasure. session. Good, good fun, we'll do it again. We will. All right, talk soon Richard and bye for now everyone.